Hey guys, Kev here, and I have a couple unboxings to do for you. First up, this is from N. Riggy. I believe it's Nick Riggy. And this is a prototype of the jersey, which is his uh, model that he's going to be doing a pre order for. I believe it is made by Shielden Knives out of China. I've worked with Shielden and working with them on the Growler. Uh, the unboxing knife there was the Devo Knives Buzz. Quick plug for my own design uh, with Colin. This is going to be up for pre-order on the 15th of October. That may have happened already. We shall see when this video goes up. But um, any support is appreciated on that. All right. This is the jersey. So we have a cool little wood chip kind of thing. 2022. That's really cool. And Riggy Knives. I like that. You get a cool sticker right here, and Riggy Knives Handmade. I think he makes custom fixed blades, if I'm not mistaken. We have a business card. Yep, there you go. Some fixed blades right there. Maybe make some folders as well. Hard to tell. Those might be uh, fixed blades. Owner and knife maker, handmade in New Jersey, hunting, outdoors, kitchen. And Riggy at Comcast.net, Instagram and Etsy, knife shop by Nick. Cool. So definitely um, check that out. We have a note, so let me read this real quick. All right. Uh, I think this went to... Um, I think this went to... Um, geez, why am I blanking? Love them knives first. So, here we go. China OEM custom build from my design. Shield and knives. Enrigi jersey model. Three finish choices for blade and body. Protos. 14C28N. Tie scales and backspacer, custom logo pivot, uh, T8 body screws, metal clip T6, ceramic bearings and detent, steel lock bar insert, final run changes, M390 or 20CV, uh, T8 clip screw, tie clip is milled, and deeper recess for body screws. Price point for final version is approximately $200 for premium, will include lined zipper pouch and some swag. Future versions. Uh, he's thinking about doing a 14C for budget, G10 in my card on a liner lock, specialty hardware, Moku tie, Zerku tie, anodized tie options, XL version, and various blade styles, clip point, tanto, sheep's foot, etc. Cool. All right, so we read through all that. I'll do a uh, review on this or overview, depending on how much time I have with it. Um, first thing I'm going to tell you right off the bat is. I don't know. I'm just kidding. I really like it. It is light. It is light. That is my first reaction. It is light. Now, uh, from what I've been able to tell, Shielden knows how to do a detent, so we'll see how that goes. You get that frame lock. Beautiful pivot. I love how the pivots uh, kind of sit. You see this material right here sitting proud, and then the pivot screw goes into that. That's just a nice touch. That's just sexy right there. You get this beautiful stone wash on the tie. I like that a lot. Tie backspacer, yep, the screws stick out a little bit, but uh, we kind of got the same thing going on here on the buzz, and we did the same thing. We asked them to bring it in. Actually, if you look at them, they're not obviously the same, but they have similarities being uh, the full tie with the screws down here, same body uh, screws, the pivot design with the logos. Kind of cool to look at. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, we are dead nuts on the centering. We have a bead blasted blade. So, that would be my first uh, critique would be, don't do a bead blast, please. Um, even M390 20CV, it will rust. Um, it's just bead blasts just suck and they should die. That's my opinion. I, I didn't read, I did read the paper, but did it say anything about... Three finish choices for blade and body. So maybe there's going to be an option for satin or stone. Anything but a bead blast, I'll take. Um, there is no play. There is no rock. It is rock solid. You have a flat grind. Man, they do such a good job with their flat grind. Um, they did our growler model, and they just bring these down to such a thin edge. It's fantastic. Um, let's take a look at the plunge grind. It's got an interesting sort of uh, backwards plunge there. Whatever you call that. Not an expert. Looks like 
it gets it's kind of tricky because of the drop off here but it's still thinning out out to the edge there so they could probably bring that plunge grind back a little bit so you don't get what people like to call a smile um but i'm not an expert so somebody else will have to talk on that um ergos let's see back here i have a large glove size hand i can fit all four fingers pretty comfortably honestly there is jimping right here but it's i mean i don't really see the point in it because it doesn't do anything if it's aesthetic sure it, it's not it's not grabbing me at all i would want the jimping up here um if i went into this kind of grip i'd want it like right here vox style that's the kind of thing i like but you know um, you can kind of do a um, flipper choil situation here. Of course, the edge is right here, but if you needed to, you could choke up like this. And I could do plenty of cutting like that, no problem. If it's heavy use, obviously, you got to be careful. Um, lock bar access is spectacular. Um, this is really good. Detent. Yeah, I'm not failing that. Not even if I try. Yet. Very smooth on the close. You hear that detent just suck in? That is a beautiful thing, ladies and gentlemen. This is a beautiful thing. I love it. Flicks out really well. I mean, this is a... Whoop, that was me. This is good, man. Uh, I would like the jimping to be a little bit more aggressive right here. Uh, that's one thing. Because you have this downward plane on the flipper tab. It's kind of like the um, the J cape. Um, it has this downward plane. So you're kind of already slipping, right? And you need that grip to get you. And I'm one of those people with sweaty hands. So I actually got this stuff. Somebody recommended for pole dancing. <laughs> and apparently it really helps uh with your grip so let's let's see let's see let's put a little on put a little on here and see what happens i don't know i mean i'm not slipping that's for sure um can you push button it yep oh get out of here mortal combat Look at that. That was fucking fire right there. Yeah, guys, this is a good one. I'm not a flipper-only guy, you know, but um, this is a good one. Can you reverse flick it is a good question. I bet you I can right off that. Come on, baby. Oh, we got it. Anybody else do that? You see any other reviewers flicking this thing? Huh? 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 Mm -hmm -hmm. Now, the bead blast does help with that. Now, left-handed, you're not going to be able to do that. Oh, <laughs> Get out of here, bro. Get out of here, bro. Oh, he missed one. Oh, he missed it again. All right. Well, if you're a righty, boom. Dude, that's sick. Yeah, this thing's fire. I love it. I love it. Let's cut something and then move on. Oh, that was me. That was me. That was me. That was the choil I caught. Look at this. Is stupid nick my dude nick so here's the deal guys i'm gonna be honest okay when i you know you guys always you know probably think well you know the guy you know the maker you know the the dude whatever so you're more likely to give it a whatever okay i don't know him i talked to nick one time on Instagram, when I reached out to ask to check this out, I reached out to ask him if I could check it out because I felt left out because I saw my buddies Casey over at Knives Fast, Brandon Thrasher, Thrasher's Garage, I think Stevie over at Said Stevie, Big Red. I saw all these guys reviewing this thing. Um, I believe a therapeutic edge and women carry knives as well. I saw them reviewing this and I was jealous because Nick didn't hit me up to check it out. Um, I felt left out of the crew. So I reached out to Nick and was like, yo, dude, uh, would you happen to have, a, you know, a prototype I could check out? Um, 
And he was like, yeah, dude, of course. I'd, I'd love to send you one. I'm going to get one sent out to you. And he literally sent one out like the next day. Um, and now I know why. He literally had no worries at all. He's confident in this design, and he should be. This thing is fire. If you're a flipper-only guy, this is money. You know, my only sort of critiques, you know, if you want to call them that, and I don't know the price point, so, you know, let's say this in its exact form came out at 150 bucks in 14C and all this stuff. Kidding me? I have no complaints. Um, you know, if you slap the M390 on it and you call it 2 250 yeah, um, I'd probably prefer the tie clip. Well, guess what? He's doing a middle clip. Probably prefer the, uh, you know, the T8s. Mm, he's doing the T8s. Um, yeah, the only other thing I don't really like is the flipper tab when it's open. It, it gives me the vibes of that Alien DP DX4 knife or whatever. Don't like that. I just don't like those, like, just, it's just a blah, it's just a flipper tab there. I don't know. The Arius has it, too. So, I mean, even $800 knives do it. So, I'm just saying. That's my only thing, guys. The bead blast and the flipper tab uh, when open looks a little goofy to me. Otherwise, this is a home run. Uh, I'm, yeah. Depending on when this pre-order is, if I didn't just spend a million dollars on another knife or something, I'm getting one of the. No, I'm getting one. I'm getting one anyway. I love it. I love this. I love the freaking contoured scale. The Dude, this is fire. All right. I'm going to do a full review, but I kind of just just uh, gushed over this thing for 11 minutes. So, Nick, dude, I don't know you very well. Literally talked to you one time. You killed it. You killed it, brother. Um, absolutely killed it. Guys, buy one of these. When this pre-order comes out, just buy it. Don't even question it. And Shield and Knives, guys, just keep your eye out for Shield and Knives. Their own designs are fucking horrible. Their designs are trash. I mean, seriously, just garbage designs. No offense. I love them. Love the people there. But the designs, my lord. Um, but now that other people are using them, watch out. Because this build for this price is stupid. Uh, the work they're doing for us on the Growler is fantastic. So, um, yeah. Anyway, the Jersey, baby. Can't wait to do the review on that one. Uh, I don't have anywhere to put these things. <laughs> Jesus. All right, put this here. Was there a pouch or something that came in? Oh, yeah, case. Okay. Sorry. I got way too much stuff here right now, so it's just a thing. It's just a thing, guys. All right, next. This is coming from White Mountain Knives. Oh. I got to zoom out here, and it's still too big. This is my... Uh, Hoback, Quichetti, and then, uh, sorry, yeah, you gotta look at my pants. Um, and then it also has some loners in it. So, just give me a second here. I'm gonna have to unload it one at a time. I'm not gonna be able to show you. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Got my Ninja. You guys knew it. As soon as I did that unboxing for Knives Live, I had to get one of these. Got my own little Ninja patch. Hell yeah. Can't wait to put that on something. I'm not even a patch guy. Commitment to quality, guys. Says it right here. Where is it? Where is it? Uh-oh. This one doesn't say it? What? The other one said... Remember the one I got... Is this like an older card? Remember the other card in the Knives Live unboxing? Go back and watch the Knives Live's unboxing. It said, made from materials and stuff in China from blah, blah, blah. But this one doesn't say that. So are we back to doing this shit again? I don't know. I'm hoping this is just an older knife or something. Uh, all the information is the same. Interesting. They forgot to print that part. <laughs> so you do get a uh, belt clip, which is hilarious. I don't know why. I mean, one belt loop clip thing. Um, and then you get this baby right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah, guys. This thing, I just was so excited about it. Let's check the edge again. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So I could totally do some actual EDC with this. Look at that. Jeez. I could EDC this, baby. Man, if only... Lynn Thompson could see this because uh, I met him at Blade Show West and he was carrying a cane sword and he had this other thing in his pocket. It was hilarious. Guys, I love the Quai Chetty. Whatever you want to think about Hoback, I don't know. This is aptly named the Redemption Machete. So you do what you want. I'll do what I want, which is wielding this baby. I saw Hoback uh, released a tomahawk that looks sick as well i hate that the top of this is open and i don't understand why it is honestly um so anyway get that back in there and uh, this is mine so this is staying with me baby next oh god it's just penis guys it's literally endless penis this is so annoying i think he's messing with me What the hell is this? Is there anything else in here? Nope. Dude, just pounds of penis or tons of penis. Okay, listen. Both from Max Ace. I can zoom back in. All right, so here's the deal. Please go follow White Mountain Knives on Instagram. Um, you can also use their code, my code, Lefty10 at checkout when you go to WhiteMountainKnives.com. You'll get 10% off your order and you'll get free shipping in the United States. It's a hell of a deal. Lefty10 at checkout. But listen, go to Instagram and follow White Mountain Knives. They're now doing these really cool reels, uh, product description reels. And it's very, very well done. Good quality. They're really upping their game. So one of these is a slip joint. And one of these is a massive freaking chunker of a knife. So let's look at the chunker, I'm guessing, first. I saw them showing this off, and I wanted to check it out, so I asked to check it out. Here you go. Pause and read. M390 59 to 60 HRC. Max Ace Knives. Okay. I don't know if they make their own stuff or what, but they always make big-ass shit. Oh, yeah, look at this. Extra hardware. We all love that. Insert and everything. Huh, people are paying attention, huh? Whoa. Here is the knife. Oh, it's got this cool blue um, clip and back. Wow, this thing is weird. Okay. I don't think there's anything else in here. No, okay. Shut this. Comes in its own freaking giant case. I don't know what these cost. Just says M390, gray handle, blade. Got some China smell. Oh, it's the Max Ace Terrasaur. Terrasaur, I think you would say. Look at this thing. This is cool. Frame lock, obviously. I guess it has an insert because we saw that. Yep, there it is. And here is the blue clip. There's this thing at the bottom. Is that, oh, is that just a, a breaker? I thought that like came out or something. Let's try to open, look at that. Weird screws down here. Jesus Christ, okay. Flat grind and another flat, man, that is thick up there. Holy shit, look how thick that is. I don't know if you can make this out, but that's a freaking pry bar up there. Pterosaur, Bowler M390, make that clear. Oh, they bead blasted the blade, which is just dumb. No offense, but why would you bead blast this beautiful thing? Guess it matches. Look at this lockup. Holy shit, this is crazy. Detent was meh. I mean, it fires. If you fire it, she fires. But I would want a little more detent on it. 
reverse flick. Woo! You can choke up all the way up to here. Feels good in the hand. Choke back. There you go. It's going to drop shut at some point. Right-handed reverse flick. Now, it does have a fuller, but nope, it falls into the blade, so you can't flick that. Um, the centering looks dead on. It's pretty thick, but it's not like uber thick. I mean, I thought it would be bigger, honestly. It's just a, it's just an aggressively styled knife. It's not like an absolute tank, like a Midgards or one of those new Riots, like the T-1000 or whatever. Um, but it's still huge, right? It's just, uh, I don't know, just different. So that's the Pterosaur. Um, I wanted to get this into review, so I'll uh, post up an overview in a few days. I'm not probably not going to carry this, and if I do, it's not going to be uh, much because it's just obnoxious. So that's the Pterosaur, and then we have this slip joint. I just thought this was interesting. Urgh. The packaging on these is crazy. Uh, another cool thingamabobber and another knife that comes out and here we go and in we go oops fold this back hold on and flap that up okay here it is so this is a slip joint and i just thought it looked very cool so i wanted to take a look at it um they offered to send it so i was like hey why not dead centered interesting handle i don't know if it's some kind of bone or something um the inlay is done pretty well i mean i can feel the gap but it's okay um you got that bead blasted bolster there's your logo on the pivot oh that is crazy okay this has more than three positions so one two three four five there's five positions did i go through one there yeah okay wait one, two, well, no, one, two, three, four, right, four, five. Five positions on the spring. It's got jimbing back here. Very thin. Oh, it's stupid thin. It just doesn't look like it would be this thin. Damn. That is crazy. Look how thin that is. Belt satin is beautiful. Look at that nail nick. Well done, but pretty minimal access to it. That is just weird. So, a traditional slip joint. Let me grab... Here's my, one of my jack wolves. This is the vampire jack coming out on the 14th. You go from closed to half stop, half stop to open, and then open to half, half to close. This is closed, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Very unique. So size-wise, you guys don't have probably a vampire jack yet so let me grab a different one i will grab the sharpshooter and i'll grab the benny's clip give you an idea whoops Grab the Midnight. Grab the Laid Back Jack. In case you have one of those. 
I can tell you right now, I prefer the action on the uh, Jack Wolf knives. And I'll show you the Canine Jack. And I'll show you the ORJ from Traditional Pocket Knives. Those are all the slip joints I have right now, I think. So there you go. It's not huge. Uh, Max Ace is usually enormous, but, um, you know, it's still big, but it's not that big. And you can see it's well thinner than a Jack Wolf. Now, it doesn't have the crazy hollow grind, but I would venture to guess it's pretty damn thin. Not quite as thin as a Jack Wolf, but let's grab some paper and see how she slices. All right, put this back in my Northwoods Leatherworks slip. Mm -mm -mm. All right, grab some paper. Feels good in the hands. Got a good, you know, just neutral ergonomic grip. It's sharp, but it's not. I feel like it should feel sharper for how thin it looks. Right? If we go back to the jersey here. Right? I can just slice through like butter. So, by the way, this, dude, this thing's fire. Um,. Yeah. So I definitely prefer a traditional slip joint in terms of the action. This is just weird. I don't know what they're going for here. If they're going for some kind of middle ground or just something different. You know, um, did they add extra tang corners? There is a stop pin in there. Um, let's grab a flashlight and just see. Try to zoom in for you. I guess there's extra tang corners in there. I mean, is that, that must be what that rounded piece is right there, right? Let's see as we go. Yeah, just has extra corners all around. I mean, they feel pretty crisp. I'd say, uh, sorry, I'd say from open to there is it weird. Then it pops to half. So it's always like, right? So full open is good. This middle isn't, and then boom, that feels great. This middle is not great, but then boom, that feels good. So had they done a full slip, like a normal slip joint, I think it would have been really good. I think they have the geometry down they just didn't do it that way it's very interesting so gotta give them credit for doing something different right so uh, that is the max ace beetle s so i guess s might stand for slip joint then we have the uh n-riggy knives jersey and we have the max ace knives pterosaur let me try that one more time that was terrible pterosaur and that's obviously going to be the biggest knife of the group. So there you go. Let me know what you guys think down below. I appreciate you checking this out. I love you all. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.